Hey guys, well it's time to do a parts list video for the top overlanding axle swap so we can go through each and every part that you will need to do the top overlanding axle swap and kind of show you where it goes and get a rough idea of how it will install. Stay tuned. So guys, let's talk about the Tahoe overlanding axle swap first. The Tahoe overlanding axle swap is for Chevy and GMC trucks, full size. It is the best solid axle conversion option out there, and let me tell you why. It allows you to retain the use of factory small bore wheels. So even some of the other axle conversions, they keep you six on five and a half bolt pattern, but you can't run factory GMT compatible wheels because they have the big large hub in the middle and GMT wheels have smaller bore. This allows you to keep the use of those wheels. So if you already purchased wheels for your truck, you don't have to get rid of them to do a solid axle conversion. It also retains the anti-lock brake function, which means you don't have to go back into the stone ages and do away with your anti-lock brake function. It also allows you to retain your auto four wheel drive function and keep your factory electric shift transfer case in the vehicle without having to even unbolt it. The whole swap can be done without even removing the transfer case at all. Let's talk about some of the parts you're gonna need first. We offer um, the extended parts bundle that's gonna come with almost everything you need. So it's gonna come with the coil mounts to weld to the frame. It's gonna come with the uh, actual radius arm builders kits for you to fabricate up your radius arms. And those will come with the mounts that you will fabricate into your cross member to make the uh, cross member modified to hold the radius arms. It'll come with the limit straps so that you can um, weld the tabs on and attach those to your uh, coil mounts and have your limit straps. It will also come with the transfer case adapter shaft and yoke, so you won't need to change out your transfer case. You will uh, also get with that kit the brake caliper spacer kit, which means that's what allows you to uh, uh, convert the Dodge axle over to six on five and a half and run the Chevy hub assemblies to keep your ABS with a GMT 800 brake rotor. It'll also come with the differential actuator relocation kit, which will keep your service four wheel drive light, light off and happy. It will then come with the pivot arm and the full steering linkages so that you can just have your steering ready to go in one shot. It will then come with the brake lines. Uh, so they have the correct ends for the Chevy and then the correct end for the Dodge Caliper. You'll just need to weld the little bracket to the frame. You're good to go. Now we also offer the fabrication parts bundle. Now what that is, is the parts bundle that has only the parts we offer that you cannot find in equivalent elsewhere. That's going to be the coil mounts, which you need to have. There's no equivalent elsewhere. It comes with the, tra the track bar builders kit, which comes with the track bar ultra heavy duty solid 1018 builders blank, both weld on joints for both ends and the track bar bracket. It will also come with the transfer case adapter shaft and yoke, so you won't have to change out your transfer case to do your solid axle conversion and the differential actuator relocation kit. You will then need to source the rest yourself. And some of the things that you're going to need to find first here is this axle housing. This axle housing is a 2000 or 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 Dana 44. And it's important that you use the 2000 to 2001 because if you use um, the 1994 to 99, you can't make it all work. And I'll explain by that. So once you've gotten the 2000 or 2001 Dodge Ram Dana 44, you'll notice that the hub assembly is actually interchangeable with the GMT hub assemblies. So GMT 800, GMT 900 hubs can bolt right onto that knuckle. Has the same inner spline for the stub shaft, same bolt pattern and thread. You just have to use the Dodge bolts to hold the hub on instead of the Chevy bolts because the Chevy bolts are too short. But when you do that, uh, you do have to use the Tahoe Overlanding Brake Caliper Spacer Kit. The Tahoe Overlanding Brake Caliper Spacer Kit, like this one right here, what it does is it takes the factory Dodge Caliper and bracket and spaces it out to be centered with the Chevy GMT 800 brake rotor when using the Chevy GMT hub assemblies. Those brake caliper spacer kits and longer bolts to go with them come in the Tahoe Overlanding parts bundles when you buy those from TahoeOverlanding.com. And that is a GMT 800 brake rotor that's the correct diameter for the Dodge caliper and bracket. So if you're doing this swap on a GMT 400 or a GMT 900, you will need to use a GMT 800 brake rotor. Okay. And there is the 
adapter shaft and yoke for the transfer case output shaft. Shaft has just been welded in so it doesn't slip out. Doesn't that weld doesn't really need to hold any force, but just to keep the shaft from sliding out. But even with the welds, it is smaller than the diameter of the seal. So if you ever do need to change that seal out, it'll slip over. Next up are the radius arms. As you can see, Tahoe Overlanding provides these radius arms as a builder's kit, all of the joints and components for you to build those yourself. Uh, we do like to um, put the center of this bolt 12 inches back from that bolt, and that's an upper locating arm. It does come with spacers. This is a two and three eighths joint up here. So it comes with three eighths spacers to put in there. It also uh, needs to be drilled out to, uh, this is a 12 millimeter hole from the factory. You need to drill that hole out to a nine sixteenths hole for that joint. Back here at the radius arm mounting point are a couple of brackets that we also provide that get fabricated into your factory cross member. And that is how you attach the radius arm to the vehicle. A video about fabricating this cross member up and radius arm placement can be found in the description. This here is a 4x4 posi lock actuator for the Dodge. You can order that up and install it. Works like a dream on these. This is what engages and disengages the front axle. Up here is the differential actuator relocation bracket and nut. What that does is it just keeps the service four-wheel drive light off and happy so you don't have any error codes or problems with your uh, system. So that's just up here on the frame. As you can see, it's just kind of up out of the way. Uh, we provide that as part of the kit as well. That there is the Tahoe Overlanding coil spring mounts. Those are adjustable in height and they're designed to have the correct coil spring spacing for the uh, GMT frames. And if you uh, use Dodge Ram 1500 springs, you can adjust the height or if you need to use a lift spring to get even more height, you will get those springs. It's compatible to use the Dodge Ram 1500 springs with the Dodge Ram rubber coil isolator up there. And it does use a Dodge Ram factory shock mount. And there's a ring in there with bolts that hold that shock mount on. You need to get one of those as well. Looks like this, it gets sandwiched from underneath between the rubber isolator and those are the studs that hold that upper shock mount on. Next up are limit straps. This suspension will out flex and out droop the shocks and springs by far. And shocks are not limit straps. You don't want your shock to be what limits your suspension travel. It damages the shock quickly to be what the uh, suspension is bottoming out on. So we also provide the limit straps if you need them, as well as the tab that welds on to the upper shock mount. And then that just ties down and shares a bolt with the upper locating arm on the axle housing. Limit straps need to be one inch shorter than the actual overall travel. They will stretch, I promise you they do. I, uh, I tested this one time. I put limit straps at the exact length they needed to be, went and off-roaded it one time, and my spring popped out because it stretched it enough to pop the spring out. <clears throat> so always set your limit straps uh, one inch so that it can stretch to the final um, length and still not have your springs pop out. The track bar, some call it a pannered bar, is extremely crucial and I've got to tell you that you can't just do it any old way. You have to actually use the Tahoe Overlanding track bar setup. And I know that seems counterintuitive. I know that you can you know, think to yourself that there's other ways of doing it. I did, had to do an entire video on just why this track bar is what you have to use in this setup but that includes the extremely crucial track bar bracket, the shape of the track bar, the joints, everything. So uh, the link to that uh, will be in the description for the track bar video, but Tahoe Overlanding provides that track bar uh, to you and all the joints and the bracket, so you don't have to worry about any of it. And it's ultra heavy duty. And when I say ultra heavy duty, this is what I mean. This right here is solid. Cold roll 1018 steel. 
And Tahoe Overlanding sends this track bar builder's blank with the weld-on joints for both sides and the frame side track bar bracket. Now we'll circle back to do springs for a minute. So what I've got here are factory Dodge Ram 1500 springs from 1994 to 2001. But if you're curious what that nets, uh, I will link to this video here in the description so that you can uh, go back and watch that short video about how much lift you get with the top of landing axle swap. But you can use factory Dodge springs. And then if that's not enough, you can actually use some lift Dodge springs. And in order to fine tune the height, the way you weld these brackets onto the frame will fine tune the height of the front. So that's why in this video here, link in the description on how to install our coil mounts, I will tell you that you need to make sure you set the rear height of your solid axle conversion truck first, and then when you set the front, you can actually use our infinitely adjustable coil mounts to make the front level to the rear. It ends up being a whole lot easier that way than just arbitrarily setting the front height and then trying to figure out how to make the rear work. So we, for example, this truck is kind of our standard build. It uses the, it's a Tahoe, and so it has coil springs on the rear. It's using the Rough Country six inch lift rear coil springs, which net actually three and a half inches of lift in the rear. That's why lift means nothing. Uh, but uh, then the front is actually leveled to it using factory Dodge coil springs and our coil mounts. Now we do have provisions for much taller trucks. Uh, we, we actually have track bar brackets. If you specify the track bar, track bar bracket for either a two inch, four inch, or six inch drop, Pitman arm. So those hang way down here. I don't have any fully built. You can see from one of our standard um, blanks that hasn't been shaped and bent up yet. Here's one of the drop track bar brackets for those. See how much more that drops. And you'll find that there's an extra hole here. And what that's for is when that's on the frame, you then run a brace mounted to that bolt hole up to the passenger frame uh, rail to strengthen that. So we, you have that much drop, but it's actually got a lot more strength than uh, it would without that. And none of the uh, competing track bar bracket companies online do anything like that. Okay, so just like our normal track bar bracket, this is one that's made for a four inch drop pitman arm. You may notice it's substantially longer. And since you don't have as much material to weld up here, and even if you did, there's this sleeve that you actually will weld a tubing to, and that tube will run diagonally up to the passenger side frame rail to provide lateral support of the track bar bracket. There is a lot of lateral forces on that, so you want to make sure that it's supported. You'll also notice that compared to other track bar bracket companies, look how much material we have to weld on. And that goes way up in there and gives you a lot of contact to the frame. And this goes all the way out the full width of the frame. Now let's talk steering. So the Tahoe overlanding axle swap uses basically factory Dodge compatible steering. So you don't have to find, you know, off the wall replacement parts to um, replace wear atoms on your swap. They are just for the most part, factory Dodge 1994 to 2001 compatible steering. It does use the special Tahoe overlanding flat pitman arm that has been drilled at the right spacing that corrects uh, steering travel and tapered for the Dodge tie rod taper. We carry that. The steering and the um, pitman arm are part of our extended builder's kit. And so you don't have to worry about even sourcing all that if you get our extended builder's kit. You can't see them real well, but you'll need some kind of frame plate to strengthen up and uh, cover the holes that are created when you uh, cut off the brackets that are in that stamped frame. Companies like WFO Concept sell frame plates, but honestly, for just a few dollars in steel, you can make your own and save a ton of money in buying theirs and shipping them to your house. And let's talk about the drive shaft. So the drive shaft, this is actually the wrong drive shaft. Um, it's just what I've got in here. But you see how much spline is exposed? This is, was way too short of a drive shaft. It just happens to be what I've got in here. The drive shaft that actually seems to be working for almost everyone doing the swap is from a 2000 Dodge Durango front drive shaft. Seems to be the perfect length. 
This one's in too much shaft splines exposed, but I haven't had any problems, so I haven't changed it out yet. But um, when you are just sourcing a drive shaft, Tahoe Overlanding can provide you one. We carry three brands of drive shaft, uh, brand new, or you can source a used one or source one locally, but you'll need one for a 2000 uh, Dodge Durango front drive shaft. You're also going to need bump stops. I like these bump stops from O'Reilly's because they have little steps on them, which means if you ever need to trim them down to fine tune your bump stop, you can actually trim those steps off incrementally. And uh, hold on. the way they're made, is they just thread on. And so if you ever need to space this out to lower your bump stops, you can actually stack washers um, between here and there and thread it back up. Okay, so what if you just want the fabrication parts bundle, not the extended parts bundle? So there's gonna be a few extra things you're gonna need. You'll still need the same 2000, 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 Dana 44. You're still going to need the coil springs, the shocks, the upper shock mount, and the bolting ring, and the rubber isolator. You'll need those uh, parts as you would with the other parts kit. But then you would also need to get your steering, and that includes the pitman arm. You also need to get your radius arms. So the radius arms are going to consist of two inch tubing, quarter inch wall, um, a two and five eighths joint at the axle end for the lower control arm portion. 2 and 5 eighths joint up at the frame end, a bracket that you can fabricate into your cross member to make the uh, cross member accept the radius arms, two beefy strong tabs to hold a joint here. We usually uh, put this bolt center line 12 inches back in this bolt by the way. You'll need some one inch by quarter wall DOM tubing and two two inch joints. Uh, those joints um, are for this upper locating arm. This is actually two and three eighths up here in this pocket, so you'll need a three eighths inch spacer. And we put that one spacer onto this inboard side, so that actually makes the clearance a little bit better on the inside of this pocket, but you can do whatever you want there. <clears throat> but you do want to make sure that you don't use full heim joints for the main connection points. Uh, we actually recommend weld-on bushings at this end and a Johnny joint at this end. And a Johnny joint's kind of like a Heim joint, but it's got a polyurethane cup, so it gives you the best of both worlds. Because radius arms do need a little bit of off-axis give to flex. Heim joints are just too tight and rigid and locked in their own oscillation of the ball socket. And so you will actually get less flex if you use all Heim joints. So I strongly recommend you don't use all Heim joints in your radius arm build. So you're going to need limit straps. And a tab that you can weld to the um, coil mount. You need brake lines, so that brake line there it needs to be a quarter inch female flare fitting for the Chevy hard line on this end. And the Dodge end is actually a little unusual. It's a 3 8 inch banjo bolt instead of a 10 millimeter. Standard length is 26 inches. And you'll need a little tab here to attach to the frame.